This video is intended for Mrs. Montgomery's second grade class in Texas as she asks us to talk about bees today. Hello, I'm Kat Schluter. I'm Dustin Scholl. And together we are K&D's Honeybees. We are located actually out of Lincoln, Nebraska. And um, the bees we have are actually located in Seward and in Garland, which is, uh, they're about 30 miles away from Lincoln. How long have we been doing bees? Uh, we took a class here at uh, the community college in 2009. We met with the instructors once a month for an entire year of beekeeping. It started in September, October, and you went through all the book learning, learning anatomy, um, learning, the, learning the terminology. In January, you actually order your bees and we got those in April, and we started keeping our own bees in April. And then once springtime hit, you were out in their bee yards working their bees. And that lasted up till the following September, October, and then the class was done, and then we've been doing it ever since. The next question is, how do you tell a queen bee from the rest? The queen is She's slightly longer than the rest of the bees in the hive. Got a really clear bald spot on their back. That's a really good way to tell that the queen's there. And all she does is lay eggs all day. She will lay her own body weight in eggs every day. Between 1,200 and 1,500 eggs a day. There's another question to that, is there a king bee? And there is not, there's only a queen. Now there are males in the hive, and they're called drones. The drones' eyes are really close together, and their eyes are huge. But for the most part, a beehive is all girls. The girls do all the work in the hive. So it's the queen, and then all of her daughters, and then there's a few drones in there. And the next question, do bees have a brain? Yes, they do, like every animal. The, uh, the brain is about the size of Pinhead. Where is a bee's heart located? A bee's heart runs um, in the top of its abdomen. Bees do have a heart, however, their circulatory system is not like ours. Where we have a heart and it beats and that forces blood through our veins and our circulatory system, their circulatory system is open. So blood runs freely through its system. It's in and around all of its organs. Bees have uh, different pipes for air to come in. So they don't just breathe through their mouth. They have uh, different openings for their lungs on their body because they need so much energy and so much oxygen when they fly that they have to have those those holes for the air to come in. And the next question, where do you get your bees? Well, uh, if you don't have a colony to kind of split that from, uh, you can actually order those from a company and those actually come on uh, a large trailer. You can go and pick those up. Or if you- Or have, in the mail. Or in the mail, they can come to you in the mail. And uh, it does look much like that. Those are boxes of bees. They have about three pounds of bees and one queen inside there. This is Dustin on our first year. I was kind of excited. He was very excited. Our bees come from Northern California or Minnesota. The other way that you can actually do that, if you have a colony to get your bees from, this is a natural occurring thing uh, where it's going to split or swarm. You take about half the bees off and um, put those into another box and then they gradually get larger and larger as, uh, as their numbers grow and more and more eggs hatch. Okay, next question was, what do you know about colony collapse disorder? Uh, colony collapse disorder is described as a beekeeper opens their hive, there's honey and there's pollen, but there's little to no bees. It's not like they died and starved out. They left. 
there's no um, there's no bodies around the hive, no dead bees, nothing like that. And it is still kind of a mystery. The scientists are still looking. As far as we know, the bees do die when they leave because we can't find them. So there's not a big group of them hanging out in a tree somewhere. Yes. But there's no immediate death just outside the hive either. Colony collapse is not just one thing. They're saying it's a combination of lack of food, pesticides, and pests. So lack of food, you used to take a drive in the countryside and there used to be flowers all over the place, out in pastures, down in the ditch, all kinds of stuff. And nowadays you just kind of see grass everywhere, whether it's brome grass, um, which is like a wild grass, or you see these great big fields of, of crops. That's called a monoculture. When they plant those big fields, they have to spray them with lots of pesticides to keep the, the pests off of their crops so that they can harvest that and then they feed us. When they spray those pesticides, sometimes those get down in the ditches and then that also take out the wildflowers in the ditches. And then So that lessens the amount of food that a bees have, even in your own backyard. Uh, most people today consider dandelions to be a weed. So they will go spray them, they'll go pick them, pull them, um, try to get them out of their lawn. Um, it's just things like that that is cutting back on their, on their food sources. Uh, the other thing I mentioned was diseases and mites. Uh, bees get mites in the hive and they are like your dog or your cat get a tick. There's actually ticks for bees. They're little tiny red dots. They're bright red, but they're really hard to see, especially when you're looking at a frame of bees. You got all these thousands of bees and they're all moving around. And sometimes they're stuck on their backs, but most of the time bees have plates and they overlap. But what the bees what the mites do is they get up inside those layers of plates. And then that's where they stick into the bee and they start sucking the bee's blood. Um, this weakens the bee and also shortens their life because they don't have, they're not healthy enough to continue on a, a full normal life cycle. But that's also definitely one of the main um, causes they're saying with colony collapse. It's just a whole mix of things that's causing the bees to disappear on us. And to finalize the, the last portion, of how are the bees dying? There are predators that uh, do attack the hives, um, like the typical honey bears um, do, do go after hives and do go after uh, hives and colonies out in nature. But um, more so, they're, they just kind of pick them off lower in lower numbers, not in like one big swoop. Skunks and other predators that are a little bit smaller when they go, they're a little bit closer more to the ground they'll actually pick off the bees one by one. They'll kind of stand out in front of the hive and pick them off one by one and it's like a little treat because they'll chew on the bee to get the honey out of their system and then they'll actually spit it out and it's called a bee pellet. It's not a pretty sight when you walk up to the hive and you see this big mound of dead bees because um, some little skunk or some little uh, animal had a nice little snack on our honey bees. Um, there are some other questions. Uh, are the bees losing their wings? Uh, not really. Um, nothing like that. Are they losing their families? No. A bee colony is works for the betterment of the colony, uh, which means every single bee in that colony works for the group. They're not in it for themselves. Say if Kat and I were bees and she had a whole plate of food, she wouldn't keep it all to herself. She would share with me to make sure that uh, we both lived. Bees are the same way. When they work together, they pass food around, make sure everyone's fed. They make sure that the babies are fed. They, they groom and, and feed the queen. But on the same note, for the betterment of the hive, if some, some feel like they're getting sick, they will actually leave the hive and they, they will go out and fly off and uh, can never see, be seen again. Um, to protect the uh, health of, of the colony as a whole. Do they freeze to death? They can, 
at least up here and when it gets further north. Sometimes we get some pretty harsh winters up here. Last couple winters haven't been too bad. Uh, one of the things that we as beekeepers do is we have to make sure that they have enough to eat for winter and we also wrap the hives in something dark, usually something black. And that's just to absorb the light. Whereas yep. um, if it's it, right now the boxes are painted white and that would reflect. So they want to absorb the, the light and that'll keep the hive warmer throughout the winter time. Are they affected by temperature? Uh, they are to a degree when you think about it. Um, if it gets really hot, flowers don't produce nectar. Bees need nectar to make honey. So if a flower is not producing nectar, then the bees aren't getting honey to get stored up for winter. We like temperatures to kind of stay mild. That way we got some flowers blooming, got some nectar on, they can start filling up those boxes with honey. And we can stack them taller than me and then we can take those off and extract the extra stuff for us. But we always make sure to leave some honey for the bees. You can't be um, greedy when it comes to this because they are their gift. They produce this for us. They're the only insect to produce food that humans consume and it's a real treat so you have to make sure that they get more than their fair share for their work. And with uh, the colony collapse disorder is the problem getting bigger? Um, Yes, it is getting bigger. Um, as monocultures are becoming more and more consistent with, um, with farming, um, it's becoming more and more difficult for the bees to get a good wealth of food. Um, it's just like your meal. You wouldn't want to have broccoli and only broccoli for your meal every single day for the rest of your life. Everyone's starting to realize what the, what those factors are that's causing this disorder within the beekeeping realm. And uh, we're all t trying to take our own steps to do our part. The good thing is, is that more and more people are becoming beekeepers. Uh, one of the major things that's really become interesting is uh, backyard beekeeping has become a really big hobby, and as well as rooftop in larger communities and cities. So bee stings, I've been stung, we're going on four years now beekeeping, I've been stung about 16 times. I she hasn't been stung. None, not once. At all. I'm extremely lucky and rare. So what you want to do, you don't want to grab it, pinch, and try to pull it out. You will force all of that venom into your body at once. So what you want to do is take your fingernail, scrape or if you don't have a fingernail take something something flat and slide it along your skin to pull that stinger out you don't want to squeeze it it's not something that just adults can do it's something that you can do with your parents or grandparents it's not something that you can quite do uh, by yourself yet but it doesn't take an adult to be a beekeeper and um, some people ask what they can do to either help support bees or beekeepers. And, um, you know, number one, don't kill them. So if you see a bee, try not to swat at it. I know the natural reaction is to kind of go like this. Um, they're not gonna hurt you. They're just sniffing you out. They're, they're, you must smell good because um, they're just looking for something sweet. They're looking for nectar and they're looking for pollen. But the big thing would be to plant flowers and uh, to, if you are using pesticide to Maybe cut back if at all possible when it's when the flower is actually in full bloom because that's when the bees get affected is because it gets onto their body when they go and they get the food and the pollen and nectar from that flower. So we just wanted to say thank you so much for this uh, great opportunity. We always love talking about uh, our hobby and our love of beekeeping. If you have any other questions, please uh, don't hesitate to give us a call and uh, or send us a message. Thanks.